Welcome back to a brand new Clash Royale video, guys. My name is Chief Pat. Today, we're going to be hopping into the next episode of our Gemming to Max series and our very first Gemming to Max episode opening up the Super Magical Chests. Now, the Super Magical Chests cost a massive 4,600 gems all the way up at Arena 8, but inside of it, you're going to get a crazy amount of epics, rares, commons, and if you're lucky, an ice wizard like this one we just got right here and we can already upgrade him up to level 2. Now of course, super magical chests can be obtained without spending any gems. You can get it very rarely by winning a multiplayer battle, but if you guys know the math behind the regular magical chests, which are somewhere between like 1 and 140 wins, it's going to take a long time to get one of these by itself, so I decided I would open some up for you guys and check out what we get. So a couple of poison spells, those are going to be the new epics that we have uh, within this new update. 19 free spells, as well as another legendary card with the princess, which is pretty crazy. I've heard that the drop rate for legendaries is somewhere between like 10 to 12% uh, for every super magical chest that you open. So I don't think it's really that common that we're going to be getting those legendaries, but at least we got two of them knocked out of the way right there. Opening up a couple more chests, you can see we're going to get some gold, a poison, 16 barbarian huts. 241 Teslas, it makes it a lot easier to gem, I definitely have to tell you guys that. And uh, another legendary card with the princess, definitely getting pretty lucky with these draws today. Now after a couple more cards pop out of this chest, this is going to be the final one that we open up today, then we're going to do some upgrades inside of our deck and see what we want to get done. Okay, so all the chests have been open, taking a look at our battle deck, really nothing we can get done, but when you scroll down, of course, there are plenty of new card upgrades to get done, including the legendary cards, which only cost 5,000 gold to get up to level two. So let's go ahead and upgrade the ice wizard right there. Looks like we can upgrade the poison spell as well, and we should be able to upgrade that as well as the dark prince twice. So I'm gonna upgrade both of those twice. It'll slowly creep me towards level 12, but honestly, I'm still pretty far away i'm definitely gonna have to get my commons and my rares up to max which honestly shouldn't take too much longer okay so after this prince goes down that will wrap it up for our final upgrade today it's all the way all the way up at level seven already they actually made it so for the new cards you actually have a better chance of getting them in the very beginning so you can catch up to the rest of your cards so that's why i seem to get a lot of the new cards off the bat and uh, if you guys are in the same position as me you will get a lot of those cards to catch up as well Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and swap the Ice Wizard in to test it out for you guys, as well as I'll put in the Dark Prince. Honestly, I think the Dark Prince may be one of the best cards inside the entire game right now. I'll swap him in for the Barbarians. He actually should do fairly well. Let's go ahead and search for a battle right now, see if we can grab anyone, and it really shouldn't be too long. Let's go ahead and get into battle against Nexco. Okay, so it looks like Nexco is a level 10, and every time they do these trophy resets, it lets you battle some of these lower level players, because for me, I'm used to fighting really high level 11s or even maxed out level 12s, so a level 10 is definitely a little bit of fun, and let's go ahead and push on the left hand side. Since he dropped that golem on the right, that means he only had two elixir left by the time he dropped it. Hog Rider's gonna go down, followed up by the Spear Goblins. Bomb Tower should be able to play defense. And that Hog Rider Spear Goblin push actually ended up taking out that left hand tower. So he's going to have to make a lot of work out of this golem or else he is going to be in a lot of trouble. Okay, so it looks like he's going to play a Hog Rider to drop over the top. Bomb Tower should do AoE damage as well as my Dark Prince is going to be running towards that Hog Rider as well. Looks like we're really not going to take that much damage and uh, arrowing that minion horde that will wrap it up for his push. So at this point, we already have a free tower down. I'm gonna drop my Ice Wizard on the right to follow up my Dark Prince, and a little bit of a push. Honestly, the Ice Wizard isn't too great on offense. As you can see, he doesn't do that much damage. He does slow down that tower's attack speed, but still, really not gonna get that much damage off in the tower. And I'm just gonna end up lightning that Wizard as well as hitting his Crown Tower and getting a pretty decent amount of damage done. Okay, so resetting where we're at. About a minute and a half left half left in this battle. I don't really think it's going to go to overtime. Let's go ahead and sit back and play a little bit of defense. He should fill up on Elixir before I do. So let's see what moves he makes first and then counteract those moves as we play. So we're going up on 8 Elixir, 9 Elixir. This guy's definitely wasting Elixir, I feel. He's going to play a Poison on top of my King Tower, which will activate him. Not very smart move. And now that we have a little bit of defense, definitely going to play an offense next starting off probably with our baby dragon. It's really good to play something slow at the very back. I was gonna play the baby dragon before he dropped that hog rider, but since he dropped that hog, plenty of time for me to gain a little bit more elixir. Hog rider's gonna go down right now, followed up by a lot more of my troops, 
And seeing as he dropped that golem, my hog rider's gonna storm right by and should do a decent job of attacking that tower. Okay, so 683 left. Gonna go ahead and lightning all three of those. Absolutely perfect lightning spell, as well as the ice wizard is bringing that golem to a halt. Looks like he does have that minion swarm right there, so we're gonna wanna arrow all these goods right here. That should reset the battle, and this one is pretty much over with only 30 seconds left. Gonna go ahead and sneak a hog in the very center. Of course, that is the quickest way to reach the second crown tower by dropping it up there. That should do it for this one, and with 20 seconds left about, looks like this one is all but over. So, so far, I really think the Dark Prince is super strong. Ice Wizard is decent, uh, but I definitely do like the Princess better as far as Legendary goes. I'm definitely going to do more card spotlights, similar to how I did one for the Ice Wizard to show you guys what's best uh, with each and every card. Looks like we're going to be so close to getting that third star. Actually going to go over my Lightning Spell with a second left. Not going to be able to get it, but still very nicely done and definitely a dominating victory. So 17 trophies, not too shabby against a level 10. Of course, he was up against a brick wall, but we were able to pull it out. And uh, yeah, that is going to do it for this episode of Gemming to Max. I hope you guys enjoyed. Definitely going to be opening up some more of those super magical chests. Obviously, they take a little bit longer than those regular magical chests. Or actually, they don't take longer. The regular magical chests take longer since they only cost 800 gems. So going to be bringing more of those to you guys soon. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure you drop a like. Until next time, I will see you guys later. Peace out.